shrouded in cloud, cloaked in mystery. We're up on the equator, on the spine, the highland, the rugged, unforgiving terrain of Australia's closest neighbour. G'day and welcome to the primitive island of New Guinea. On this mission, I'm going to take you from the mangroves all the way across the swamplands, up a river, into the rainforest, and right up into the mysterious jungles in the clouds. out of the equator. In that cloud is a hidden glacier and all the water that's shed off the highlands goes down into deep, impenetrable rainforest that's never even seen a pioneer nor an explorer. The rivers, the tributaries snake their way through mosquito-infested tracts of mangroves, the greatest expanse of mangroves in the world. They dump out into the Arafura Sea, into a tribal race that's seen very, very few white people. This ceremony was really scary. I was quite intimidated, and they've been performing it for thousands of years. My journey starts here at the Camorro village right on the edge of the Arafura Sea in the greatest expanse of mangroves in the world. Each side of us are well-known tribes that used to be headhunters. greeted with such a ceremony by the entire tribe of three to four hundred people. How's that for a traditional greeting? Unbelievable. Thank you very much. These people are carrying on with their tradition that's been in place for over a millennia. And unfortunately, I can't understand their native tongue. It's interesting how kids all over the world hate to have a bath, and yet they love it in the river. I've been invited to join a hunt. I'm hoping to get to the wildlife before they spear and eat it. That traditional headgear they're wearing is cassowary feathers. And my traditional headgear is a cap. All of these boats are dug out of one single tree. The big ones, the small ones. Incredible mode of transport. And they've been using them for centuries. There's a mangrove monitor up here on the beach. Here we go. Wiki wiki, they call it. And this one's way too slow for my liking. It doesn't seem quite right. These things are like lightning fast. Wiki, wiki. Check this bloke out. You know, I've never ever been able to get this close to a mangrove monitor. There's something wrong with it. Come here, mate. 
No jumping. Wow, he's a bit crook, all right. Ooh. Have a look at this. Oh, here we go. Look at this. Look at this. Here, under his belly. Look at these puncture marks. These are dead set puncture marks. Poo. And you can see, like those, those two there, and these two here, I'd say, whack, crocodiles grabbed him. You can see how emaciated he is. Look at his hips are showing, his tail is totally sucked in, got no meat, got no body tone, he's not aggressive, he's not, oh, there he goes, he's sticking his tongue out. That's not too bad. That's not too bad, little lizard. He's taken a heck of a hit, and that's one reptilian predator eats the other reptilian predator. This place is quite a good stronghold for saltwater crocodiles and for mangrove monitors. I have never seen so many mangrove monitors in one place in all my life. And I couldn't quite understand how I was able to get so close to this one and why he was hanging around in the shallows. He's sick. In fact, I'd say this poor little lizard's gonna die. Look at his claws. They're a spectacular animal. That beautiful black coloration with the yellow spots. Look how big his back feet are and his toes. They can climb trees like they're going out of fashion. Well, mate, best of luck. Best of luck. I feel sorry for him, but it's nature's way. This is the way it is. Actually, I might put him up here in the shade. Steve's leaving the Komodo village on a journey that will take him from the Arafura Sea up through the mosquito-infested mangroves into the lowlands, up through the rainforest, from the foothills of the highlands right up to the top of the world, to the jungle in the clouds. All along the way, there's new opportunities to explore wildlife, strange and mysterious animals, some which have never been recorded before. All the while Steve presses through the jungle, he hears the high-pitched noise of insects buzzing and humming all the time. He's onto a beautiful snake, a green python. Hang on, mate. Are you going up that tree whether I like it or not? Ooh. Trying to be really gentle. I can't believe it. A green python. Check this out. Have a look at this. Green pythons are one of the more common snakes here. They're like a dime a dozen. Absolutely beautiful. And you can see how well they climb. Amazing thing is, they've got a brilliant sense of vibration. This snake could feel the vibrations of my footsteps as I was coming towards the tree. He's gone from his basking position straight up that vine. And it was only in my peripheral vision that I was able to locate him, was able to pick him up and see him zip up there and catch him. Oh wow, are they beautiful or what? Look at this, I'm in no danger. This is a non-venomous snake. Ah, he's constricting my head. <laughs> nah, they're beautiful, look at this. Glorious snake. I've seen some snakes in my day, but I tell you what, the green python is certainly the most brilliant, vividly, brilliantly colored snake in the entire world. They're basically nocturnal. They hunt for their food during the night. And look at the way he stretches out. Look at this, straight out, straight as a stick. They're very slow moving snakes and they can stretch from one branch to another. Now have a look down here, this is amazing. See his tail? Look at the blue coloration of his tail. This is one of the few python species in this world that will caudal lure. So they'll actually stick their tail in amongst the leaf litter or on a tree and they'll wiggle it like this. Right, so that's a lure. So he's wiggling, wiggling, and he'll have his neck into the S position, ready in ambush. 
Wiggle, 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 wiggle. As soon as a little rat or a mammal or even a lizard comes close enough, whack, strike, coil around it. Right around it, tighten up, and air's pushed out. And as that animal tries to breathe, air gets less and less air until the animal is finally asphyxiated. Pythons don't actually crush their food, they asphyxiate them by cutting down the amount of air they can get into their lungs. They're a beautiful constrictor. They're very common here in the lowlands. Very common. Have a good day, mate. Ah, here's a nice, cool retreat. And I know for a fact that we're only going to get New Guinea crocodiles or freshwater crocodiles up here. Their maximum length is around 10, 13 feet. And they don't eat people. So I should be pretty well safe. I'm a big believer in learning as I go. And I've picked up a really innovative technique from the local people on how to catch a bit of makan. See, they love to eat freshwater turtles, or what we call in Australia, tortoises. And they've got this really clever technique of location using this equipment. And you have to glide through the water with your toes, gliding, gliding, because the turtles can feel vibration. Here we go, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Have a look at these. <laughs> Aren't they gorgeous? Oh, wow, it's a soft shell. It's a soft shell. Now you can see this one here. This one's just standard freshwater tortoise. Now he's a pretty standard tortoise. And it's a little female. You can see she's got the short tail with the cloaca there. Web bat feet so they can flip through the water. Gorgeous. Where you go. Quick. Oh, you're not swimming. Quick, you don't have a swim. <laughs> and have a look at this. Wow. This is a soft shell or a pig nose. You can see why they call them a pig nose. Have a look on the end of her nose there. She's got a snorkel. So she's got this little snorkel and she can stick that up and that's all that comes out of the water. And if she's in the reeds, she can stick her little snorkel up, get some air and pull back down. Look at this. She's got a soft, leathery shell. Her whole shell is just beautiful, leathery. And it actually, you can see it's like, it's like her skin. Her house, the shell, flows all the way into the skin around her head. Oh, look at her little mouth open. She's going to bite me. They can project their mouth out really quickly, so they'll sit in the water, buried down in the mud in the reeds, and they'll sit there with their head, and she'll wait until a little fish or a crustacean comes past and then go, whoa, grab it and swallow it down. This would be an immature one. They get big. They get up around this big, and the only time they'd come out on land is to lay eggs. Wow. Okay, sweetheart, there you go. Isn't she gorgeous? As the river becomes more narrow and shallow, it's just about as far as the boat can go. So this is where Steve's going to be dropped off. He has to travel the rest of the way by foot through the thick, dense jungle that absolutely swallows him up. There's no way of knowing what lies ahead, what type of animals, what weird plants, what strange creatures he may encounter. Hey, little fella. Hey, little fella. Look at this. This is a rainforest dragon. He's sitting up here watching for other dragons. He's insectivorous. They've got a great... That's what he's eyeing off down there. They've got a great detail for movement. You can see his eyes, got that round pupil. They're strictly diurnal, so they sleep at night. During the heat of the day, they're hunting. They're quick as lightning. So just do a little trick here. Got him. Hey, hey, you're all right, mate. You're all right. Come on, little fella. There he is. Okay, now you can see on the back of his neck, these spikes. Looks like a dinosaur, huh? And that's all part of his gear to uh, attract the girls. Look at me, look at me, girls. And his skin's coming off, isn't that amazing? Look at this, sloughs of skin coming off there. All reptiles do that. Now you can see the beautiful colors that he's got underneath his skin. You're all right, mate. His little jacket's coming off and you can see even on his legs. And there's his bright new colours underneath that skin. Magnificent. 
That's a bit raggedy, isn't it? We'll take that off. Woo! Won't the girls like him in his new jacket? Hey? Good boy. There you go, mate. To some, the jungle may look scary. But to Steve, it looks like one big playground. Lots of neat vines and exciting trees to climb. And if there's nothing on the ground, he'll go up. This fig tree has grown around another tree and strangled it. The tree could be up to 200 years old, and it's immense. This first bit, pretty slippery. It's got a lot of moss on it. But once I get over the first 50 feet, I should be out of the moss. Come on, Steve. Oh. It's incredible enough just to be climbing this tree, getting up to heights over seven stories. Steve's looking for any kind of wildlife, and the thought of juggling wildlife with one hand and hanging on with the other is daunting. Here's a goanna, a type of goanna species. Oh, have a look at this. You're right, mate. You're right. You're right. Whew. I'm right now. Now, this is probably the biggest predator up here. Oh, this is a mangrove monitor, and it's a goanna species. Oh, you're grumpy. You're all right, mate, you're all right. I wouldn't want to take a bite off one this size, because it'd hurt like heck. Come on, mate, up you get. Mangrove monitor, being a goanna, strictly a carnivore, so he's up here cruising around looking for lizards, birds, bird's eggs, frogs, anything that's smaller than him, he'll eat. He's like the crocodile of the trees. They're found from the sea into the mangroves, right up here into the rainforest. Righto, mate. Righto. You're right. Up you go, then. Oh, not good. Tossing big predators while you're climbing trees. Not good at all. Oh, here we go. Look. And this is what that mangrove monitor would be chasing. It's a little gecko. Look how yellow he is. Beautiful. And he uses these big root systems like a cave. And they're a nocturnal animal, and they can climb like blazes. They've got little pads on their feet, like little Velcro pads. Oh, crikey. I wish I could climb like that. And he's a bit vulnerable out here in the sunlight. Come on, mate. Come on, little fella. So I'll put him back in his cave. You can see those big nocturnal eyes. They're insectivorous. These big fig trees full of insects. There you go, buddy. In you go. In you go. Yeah, you watch out for those big goannas. There you go. Steve's finally made it into the canopy. And have a look at how far down it is. Oh, maybe you better not look. The jungle is made up of layers, and when you finally get into the canopy, you, you discover wildlife that you can't possibly imagine. Steve's gone 200 feet up just to check it out. Woo! Steve Irwin, human tree room. And now he's got to get back down in typical Steve style. Wow, pretty handy to find this vine here. Makes it a little easier. Swinging down the vine like that, I think all he needs is a loincloth. Now that he's reached the understory again, he's back on the ground. And you can see that the jungle's overgrown, even on the floor level. The plants are above Steve's head. Jungle rules. Steve cuts through the jungle using animal trails. And like most animal trails, they eventually lead to water. Oh, hang on, mate. Death adder. Have a look at the way he curls up under the leaves. In fact, these guys are leaf. Ooh, you're a bit naughty. He's a little bit upset. Come on in. That's better. Have a look at this. I'm just going to try and grab him here. Now, this is a huge risk. 
big risk because they're quick, really quick at striking, but he's not as aggressive now. All he wants to do is get away. Now you can see how short and fat he is. How about his eyes? Look on top of his eyes. He's got like little eye shields where his eyes stick up like really high eyebrows. They poke right up. Short, fat body structure. Very typical of the death adder. And they're very common here in Irian Jaya. Under any of the leaf litter in this jungle, you'll find death adders. You don't find them up, here we go. You don't find them up in high elevations, only down here in the lowlands, but they'll go down as far as the mangroves. Love this rainforest. I'm gonna have to put him down, he's getting very agitated. Come on, mate, you're all right. There you go, just relax, relax there. Another really unique feature of the death adder is his tail. Oh, he's flattening out, see? He's aggressive. See this tail here? Have a look at the little white lure. So, he'll lure that, wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle it, right in front of his head, in the leaf litter. A skink, little lizard, or a gecko will come along. Lure, 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 get closer and closer. And as the skink pounces for his lure, whack! He'll just jam those fangs, usually into the chest cavity, kill the skink and swallow it down. They're almost a lizard specialist over here. They love to eat little lizards. But this little bloke here, he'd only be about a year old. He would pack enough of a bite to kill me easily. There's a fair few people over here that die from this species of snake. It's because they camouflage in the leaf litter. So I'll just let him on his way. Just go on your way, little fella. Have a good day. Oh, look at this. This is a white lipped python. Pretty obvious. Ooh, ooh, you're all right, you're all right. No biting now. Pretty obvious why they call them a white lip python. You can see its lips got those beautiful white scales. Well, you're gonna bite, aren't you? It's a little bit grumpy. Understandable. It's having a nice leisurely hunt through these mossy rocks. And I disturbed her. Oh, 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 oh. I'm sorry, sweetheart. I can't say I blame her. She's really angry. She was just having a nice leisurely hunt and I've come and disturbed her. Have a look at that beautiful gold coloration along the side of their body. And like all pythons, she's a constrictor. These white-lipped pythons are notoriously aggressive and I don't want to get her too upset, so I'm just going to let her go on her way. There you go, sweetheart. And just disappears back into her own environment like that. Check this out. Steve's continuing to follow the crystal clear streams up towards the foothills of the highlands. This is cold water coming down from the mountain and traveling up the streams is easier than cutting through the jungle. It's a great way to spot wildlife too because, hey, everything comes down to the water. Hey, hey, hey. You're all right, mate. You're all right. Whoa! <laughs> Tree snake, look at the way he's puffing his throat out. He's all aggro, he's gonna bite me right on the face. They can get out straight as. And when he puffs that throat up like that, he means business. Look at him, no matter where I go, he just keeps going at my face. And that's a predator avoidance system. He's gonna strike, bite me on the nose. And so if a predator comes, he puffs his throat out. Look how big and tough I am and whack, he'll actually strike out at you. Look at that forked tongue going. Tree snake, he's got some beautiful banding there. Look at those bands coming back. And he's cruising around in the water. Getting a feed of frogs. Oh, he's hissing, opening his mouth up. You're a funny little snake. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm the friend of the snake. Come on, then. Oh. Quick, 
Away you go. Even though this is a tree snake, like all snakes, it's a very good swimmer. So there's two species of crocodile, and this is a New Guinea crocodile. They're predominantly found in fresh water, but they can actually go down into the coastal areas into brackish water, and occasionally they'll enter salt water. But they've got to be really careful, because if they go down into the territory of the biggest crocodile in the world, the saltwater croc, they'll get eaten. They look very similar to a salty. This one's only a yearling. Look at his eyes, he's looking around. What's going on? He thinks I'm a big predator and I'm gonna eat him. Not at all. Look at his little head. Just like a little dinosaur. Beautiful little eyes and nostrils. And look, he's got great sharp teeth already. Hey? And he'd be feeding on insects. I tell you what, he's got a beautiful water hole here. Isn't he gorgeous? Absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful little animal. He's a little beauty. It's easy to see why he's living here. This beautiful water has loads of fish and delicious insects to eat. Look at him go. He's at home here. And it's so hot in this climate, the humidity must be 100%. So Steve takes the opportunity to cool off as well. And what a fantastic experience, swimming with a crocodile. There's nothing to worry about with the New Guinea crocodile because it doesn't grow large enough to see people as a food item. So even his mom and dad wouldn't pose a threat. Life was pretty easy in the jungle, but now Steve's climbed up to the highlands. Well, that's only a few thousand feet. You can see the lowlands river meandering right back down into the mangroves. Oh boy. Now, I've got to go right over the top of those. I've climbed to just over 4,000 feet and the air's starting to thin out. Now it's hard yakka climbing up and down these mountains. They're as steep as. Up and down, up and down. <laughs> well now these lakes got up here. Uh, amole! Amole! <laughs> Going up and down these mountains, I need legs like a tree kangaroo. But when you're traversing across, crikey, it's hard yak. And you're on such a hideous incline that you need one leg longer than the other. This whole place is dotted with caves. I can't wait to see what wildlife's in them. You're looking at 168 inches of water. What's that like? Uh, 14 feet of water annually. That's around four meters. And this is limestone. Right behind me is a fault line. And this is a fracture. And of course, it's always moving. And where you get water coming down through the cracks, it dissolves the limestone, creating beautiful cave system. Right in behind that waterfall is one of those caves. These caves are going to be incredible because they're not explored. It's very difficult to get to them because you've got to go against the current. Steve's risking everything going up this water because it has tremendous force and the rocks are very slippery. But there could be incredible things inside. Zipping around, they're actually feeding right now. Going out the cave, look at them behind us, look at that. Woo! It's a combination of bats and swiftlets. Wow. These are in 
Insectivory is back. Now, there's several different species that will actually roost in the same area. They'll use the same roost. And there's over 50 different species of Insectivorius bat throughout the island. They're probably the most abundant of all of the mammal species. got tiny little wings and the amazing thing with these bats is they'll use the dark canopy and you even see them flitting around during the day. Beautiful little animals, <laughs> aren't they glorious? And they've got quite good claws on their back feet, little tails and of course those membranes for wings. They've got a great set of teeth, they use an incredible location device, sonar, and really good teeth for chopping into insects. All around the walls of the caves, almost over vertical, are the swiftlet nests. And so when mum and dad go out to feed on insects, they leave their chicks. They only leave them for a short period of time. They don't want them to cool down. However, it is quite warm in here. And then they'll come back with a beak full of insects and they'll tease the little baby chick and she'll get, 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 open her mouth and then they'll go. There's a whole combination of eggs, little pinky chicks and just feathers. Out of the cave and into the clouds. I've got to pick up the pace because I've got a rendezvous. It's like a rendezvous in a time warp. This boss is so slippery. Welcome to the highlands of New Guinea here in Irian Jaya. This is German from a Mumay tribe. Yeah. Special handshake. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Bagus. Bagus. So welcome into the Mungmay tribe's uh, territory. We're way up in the highlands, probably up around four and a half, five thousand feet elevation. And this is the home to some pretty incredible marsupials. We've got tree kangaroos, various species of cuscus, -cus, and it's hard yakka. Most of the time we're going up and down hills. And have a look how this bloke's built. He's like a giant big piece of steel. He's got muscle on his muscles. Very strong. And you can see these, look at this, this is their weaponry. Very unique. They've got no uh, feathers on the end. And this one would be for uh, couscous. 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 Any onto couscous? Yeah. Yeah. Any onto burung? Fish? Yeah, burung. Burung? Bikini. Yeah. Uh, burung. Oh, uh, bird! Yeah. Bird, bird, bird. Aha. Uh -huh. Ah. Ah. Tazum. Which one? This one, uh, Bobby. 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 Uh, oh, uh, in, in, in. This one? Yeah. And they put a, uh, a poison, this black tacky-like stuff, and when whew, they hit a barbie, a pig, or a cassowary, they die very quickly. Tell you what, this is awesome, unbelievable, and getting the lay of the land. This bloke's grandfather's grandfather's grandfather's, they've all been in here, and they had the lay of the land down pat, running around here without shoes on. Holy smokes. Of course, as soon as he finds something, I'm going to scoot up the tree and uh, get in nice and close so we can have a close look at him. Uh, I'm not interested in uh, shooting them to eat. We'll go down the markets and buy some fish later. Here's a people that have the lay of the land. Tribal peoples throughout New Guinea understand their environment just like the animal species they share it with. Incredible how there's growth on the growth. Here we go, he's onto something. He has a lot of trouble understanding. I want to look at it. I don't want to eat it.
He's got an incredible eye for movement and detail. He moves through this jungle with instinct. Powers of observation are absolutely everything. And I'm already starting to pick up a few techniques, what to look for. You can see the claw marks in this moss are quite obvious. And he picks up on them really well. You can hear that rustling. We're coming onto another tree kangaroo or a big cuscus. Oh, kangaroo, kangaroo. Oh, tree kangaroo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kangaroo. It's tree kangaroo. We're seeing stuff as we go, but as it gets closer to dark, we'll see a heck of a lot more. Everything's already starting to happen. Tunggu. Uh, udang pisang? Ya. Yeah. Belum berbuah. Ya. Yeah. Kalau dia berbuah besar-besar, kuskus makan. Kuskus, burung, kami bisa makan. See over here, this is a banana yeah. tree, pisang. Ya, yeah, itu 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 baru baru tanam. Aha, tunggu tunggu. Banana tree, and he's telling me this is really significant. Everything eats it. I'll make the best of it and fill my pockets up. You never know. A pocket full of bananas wouldn't go astray, even if I get to eat them. Okay. So we're just going to combine a bit of uh, ingenuity from the civilized world. So this one, like. Okay. Yeah? On your head? Yeah. Yeah? This is a very traditional headdress made out of cassowary feathers. Yeah. Cassowary, yeah? Ini bulu cassowary. Yeah. Yeah, okay. bulu cassowary. Taro di atas kepala. Okay. Bagus. Bagus. Yeah. Put him in here. Yeah. And uh, this one. Bagus. Yeah, turn on. Yeah, oh, bagus. bagus. And this one. Okay, bagus. Okay, we're looking, looking, couscous. Okay. Okay. Ah, jalan. Okay. We're establishing an absolutely phenomenal communication. And working less than six feet from this man is a gift. He is oozing instincts that I'm picking up on and the wildlife he can see. Let us, let us, let us. Okay, you keep your torch yeah. there, kangaroo. Yeah, yeah. Woo! Yeah, that's yeah. 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 Strictly herbivores, so they eat leaf, leaf tips, lichens and mosses. And they'll even come down onto the ground and feed on any of the uh, growth down there. Absolutely insane to think that you can get so close to these animals. Especially, we stirred it up. She bolted up a tree. Look at her tail. Look, look, look. Sang, yeah. makan, yeah. kangaroo. Yeah. I'm going to try some bananas. What a beautiful animal. Look how stocky it is. It's more like a bear than a macropod. The bananas are working. It's working. He's on it, he's on it. 
Yes. Notice the way she grips the banana with her front feet. Their little front paws are quite dexterous. And she eats skin and all. You can see that big, long tail. It's very powerful, and it's like a counterweight. Look at this. Look, look, look. Here she comes. The old banana trick. It's working a tree. I'm gonna fall on my neck in a minute. I just gotta reshuffle. Crikey. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh. Whoa, hurt my, uh, my bottom. But I tell you what, that was an awesome experience. Terry Marka C. Bunyak. Who could believe? Get that close to a tree kangaroo. Oh, my neck. Oh. Hey. Cus -cus. Yeah, cus -cus. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cus -cus. Hey, this is Stein's cousin. Must have been attracted by all the banana that's dropped down and the crushed banana in my pocket. Oh, yeah. Pissam, pissam. He can smell the bananas. You're all right, sweetheart. You're all right. Yeah. Yeah. Yummo! How's this? This is a Stein's cuss cuss. Got a beautiful white blaze on his chest. Oh! He thinks I'm gonna take the banana off him. <laughs> I gave him the banana. You see those big bulgy nocturnal eyes? Isn't he cute? Absolutely darling. It's a girl. Oh. I don't think she liked me looking at her little girly bits, but she's got a pouch. I can actually see a little fold of skin in there, a little pink fold of skin. I wouldn't mind betting it's actually got pouch young. Don't take... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Grumpy little devil. Too good. This is too good. I can't believe how low a tree this girl's in. Really low. She'd be flat out being six feet off the ground. Obviously. You can see her bulgy little eyes. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. I'm out of here. She's had enough. <laughs> She's like, okay, 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 okay. Woo! Magnificent.
discoloration of any marsupial in the entire world. Look how big his eyes are. And what a face. Look at that for a face. Is that the prettiest face you've ever seen? They are so cute. You just want to squeeze their little cheeks and kiss them right on the face. In Australia, we've got two species. We've even got this spotted species. They're quite rare, if not endangered. Here in New Guinea, there's nine different species of cuscus. again. See that way that tail just curls around. It's like another appendage and it's all pink where there's no hair. So they'll curl it around and they're able to delicately swing from tree to tree, get in amongst the limbs, grip so as they can use their front hands to get a feed. Would you ever have believed that you could get this close to a marsupial. This is just, this is nothing like what I've experienced in Australia. And I guess this place, this montane forest is so remote that they've never seen people before. Right, big spider crawled over my arm. Never seen people before, they have no fear. Unbelievable. It's just sitting back there, incredible stuff. I gotta get out of this canopy. The jungle in the clouds comes to life at night. These animals make this place the Garden of Eden. The Freeport Copper Mine ferries gear up to the top of the range frequently. And they've given me a gift. They're going to take me by helicopter on their next load, which will give me the opportunity to cut straight to the chase. This mine is located at over 12,000 feet up in the mountains, and it's an engineering masterpiece to build a mine so high up. This is an incredibly inaccessible region, and helicopter is the main way of ferrying equipment in and out. To complete my journey, I'm going to go up by chopper, up to an equatorial glacier, one of only a few, a handful in the world. So now we're going to go way up over the top of the clouds, over the top of those mountains, right up to an equatorial glacier. The pilot's going to have to go on oxygen. The air's too thin. He can't afford to have the risk of passing out or we all die. Talk about the top of the world, 
We're trimming at around about 16,000 feet. This is the highest point between the Andes and the Himalayas. The helicopter's only got a very narrow window to drop me off and pick me up. Around about four minutes, we've got to come in with less than half a tank of fuel and get ready to get back in there and hit it back down again. If you can imagine, this whole area down through here used to be a big glacier. And it's just diminished over the years. We're just seeing the last part of it. It used to go all the way down, straight down through here. And slowly but surely, it's eroded and formed this magnificent rock formation. Woo! Woo! I'm on top of the world. I get to do the wildest things in the world. Aren't I lucky? Here I am, right on top of this glacier. And it's not going to be here for much longer. In 20 years, she'll be gone. Crikey! I wonder how old this ice is. Check this blue ice down here. Quite amazing to think that um, this won't be here all that much longer. Global warming. Perhaps it's a natural phenomenon. And perhaps by being up here at this glacier, we can actually start to realize the catastrophic effect that us, the human race, is starting to have on the entire environment. Because what's being affected up here is affecting the entire ecosystems all the way down into the mangroves and into the ocean. It's quite inspirational to be right fair smack on top of the world. My window's shut. I've got to get back on board and take off and get out of here. Once in a lifetime experience. Pretty soon, the clouds will cloak this mountain back over. Here they come. Right, this place has the thickest of atmospheres. It's so thick you can cut it with a knife. And it's remote and primitive. One of the most primitive left on our Earth. All of the animals, the species that are found here, have evolved and are only right fair smack in the jungles in the clouds. 